Right. Um, so enjoying all of this, I guess. <coughs> now, let me define another entity for you. So far, what we've uh, spoken of are the chords of a circle. So what's really a chord? You know, a chord is a line that intersects the circle at two distinct points, right? That's a chord. That's a chord. So if there is a line that intersects the circle at two distinct points, then this part bit intercepted by the circle will be the chord of the circle, right? And this whole PAB, if you take any point on AB extended P, then PAB is referred to as the second of the circle. This is called a second, right? Now, what I do is, <coughs> let me start to pull PAB downwards. Then A comes here, B comes there. Further down, A comes here, B comes here. Then do you realize that if I keep pulling AB down, the two points A and B would be coming closer and closer together, closer and closer together, closer and closer together. Eventually, you'll find a situation, you'll find a situation in which A and B coincide. If you keep pulling these, this cord down further and further and further and further, A and B close and they converge. Eventually, in a limiting case, when A and B converge, they sit at the same point. That means this is a second. All of these were seconds, but this is a special second. It's a second in which A and B degenerate into one single point. They coincide. That means if a line, this is a line that intersects a circle at two distinct points. This is a line that intersects the circle at two coincident points. That means physically one point, but this could be imagined to be mathematically two coincident points. So if I pull A and B down, then the two distinct points A and B become coincident. And then this is a state in which this line boils down to. And this state of the line is called a tangent. This is called a tangent to the circle. This is called a tangent to the circle. So the tangent physically intersects the circle at one point. In fact, this is not one point. Mathematically, this is two coincident points, right? That's what a tangent is. Now, let me look at a property of the tangent to a circle. So this is a tangent intersecting the circle physically at one point, but mathematically at two coincident points A and B. And then, a simple property of tangents. <coughs> Say if this was a tangent to the circle, this was a tangent, a line that intersects the circle at one point. In fact, we like to be more authentic about it. It's a line that intersects the circle at two coincident points. Mathematically, we say these two points are coincident, but physically, it's just one point. Its location on the board is one. So this is a tangent to the circle, intersecting the circle at one point P. Say if O be the center of the circle, if O be the center of the circle, then OP will be the radius at the point of tangency. OP is the radius at the point of tangency. This is the radius at the point of tangency. Now, now, <coughs> if I take any other point on the tangent, say a point A. A is any other point on the tangent. Then, do you realize that 
the distance of O from A will always be greater than the radius R. OP is the radius R of the circle, right? OP is the radius R of the circle. Then OA, realize that this is B. Then do you realize that OA will always be greater than OB? OA will always be greater than OB? That means OA will always be greater than R. Right? Since A is outside the circle, OA will always be greater than the radius R of the circle. So OA greater than the radius R. Right? Now if OA is greater than the radius R, that means, that means any other point on the tangent is farther than the distance, the distance of any point on the tangent from the center of the circle is more than OP, is more than OP because R is OP. That means OA will always be greater than OP. OA will always be greater than OP. Meaning what? Meaning what? If OA for any A on the tangent is greater than OP, that means P is closest to O compared to any other point. That means P on the tangent is the point which is closest to the point O. That means OP is the shortest distance between O and the tangent. OP is the shortest distance between O and the tangent. And if OP is the shortest distance between O and the tangent, then the shortest distance between a point and a line is the perpendicular distance. The shortest distance between a point and the line is the perpendicular distance. OP is shorter than any other OA. Therefore, OP is the shortest distance between O and this line. See, OA greater than OP. So, OP is smaller than any other OA. And which readily brings us to the fact that OP must be perpendicular to OA. OP must be perpendicular to the tangent. OP must be perpendicular to the tangent because the perpendicular distance of a point from a line is the shortest distance between them. Now, so the radius at the point of tangency will always be perpendicular to the tangent. That is what we have established. That means the tangent will always be perpendicular to the radius that is drawn at the point of tangency. This will always be 90 degrees. Now, once we understand what a tangent is and we understand one of the properties of a tangent, that means the tangent always perpendicular to the radius at the point of tangency, then a related property is what I want to communicate next to you. So, check on this. See, if this is a tangent, if this is a tangent at the point P, say, this is tangent at P, tangent drawn to the circle at P, right? O is the center. Okay, now just to remove the clutter, let me first do it without drawing this. Suppose I select any point A on the circumference. Let me join P to A. Let me join P to A. Then I claim that this angle alpha, suppose this is any point B, then the angle alpha is what? Angle alpha is angle APB. Angle alpha is angle APB is angle alpha. Now, if C be any point on the circumference on this segment, see this is a segment, and if C be any point in this segment, if C be any point on this segment, then PCA this angle PCA and angle APB, angle PCA and angle APB are 
are said to be. Angles in alternate segments. Angle APB and angle PCA are said to be angles in alternate segments. The property that I want to establish is that given a tangent, the two angles produced in alternate segments must be equal. That means if this is alpha, I want to establish that this angle will also be alpha. That is the objective, right? Now, check that out. Suppose O is the center of the circle, right? Now, when I join, join O to P, then OP will be the radius, OP will be the radius and if OP is the radius, then OP will be perpendicular to PB, OP will then be perpendicular to the tangent drawn at P. Now, if that be the case once again, then angle OPB is 90 degrees, right? Angle OPB would be 90 degrees. So, what is angle OPA? Angle OPA, that means this angle would be OPB minus alpha, right? Angle OPA, that is this angle, would be angle OPB minus alpha. But what is angle OPB? Angle OPB is 90 degrees. So, this is 90 degrees minus alpha. So, this angle that you see here is 90 degrees minus alpha, right? Okay. Now, join O to A, which is another radius. Join O to A, which is another radius. OA is the same as OP. They are radii of the same circle. This triangle OPA then is isosceles. So, angles opposite to equal sides must be equal. So, if OA is OP, then this angle 90 minus alpha would also mean that this angle is 90 minus alpha. That means angle OAP, angle OAP is also 90 degrees minus alpha. This angle 90 minus alpha this angle 90 minus alpha. So, what should this angle be? Angle POA. Angle POA should be what? Can you tell me? What is it? See, this angle plus this angle plus this angle is 180 degrees. Yes or no? So, this angle must be 180 degrees minus this plus this. Right? So, angle POA should be 180 degrees minus this plus this, but this plus this is twice 90 minus alpha, right? They are equal, twice 90 degrees minus alpha. So, that makes it 2 alpha. That means, AP subtends an angle 2 alpha at the center. AP subtends an angle 2 alpha at the center, yes or no? AP subtends 2 alpha at the center, then what will it sur subtend on the circumference? Half that. If this is 2 alpha, this must be alpha. Angle at the center is twice the angle on the circumference. So, if the angle at the center is 2 alpha, the angle on the circumference must necessarily be alpha. And this is what we set out to prove. That means, if angle APB is alpha, then the angle in the alternate segment, which is defined as this angle PCA, that must also be alpha. So, if a tangent is drawn to a circle, then and on drawing a chord at the point of tangency, see if a tangent is drawn to a circle, then on drawing a chord at the point of tangency, the angles produced in alternate segments must necessarily be equal. That means, if this angle is alpha, the angle that the chord makes with the tangent must be equal to angle in the alternate segment, which is angle ACP also equal to alpha. So, by this time, good enough, we are almost nearing the end of standard properties related to circles. The rest that we will learn in as far as properties are concerned would be add-ons, right? 
this much for this time. Head for more, hit for more, and love it as you move along. Thank you so much. Very shortly, more with you. Bye-bye.